The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Oosterhouse here with realagriculture.com. If you're watching this in video format, despite the fact that we are in a wheat field, I know, we know, we are here today to talk canola. As I said, we are here for a canola school episode, and I have here with me Tom Wolf of Agrometrics and Sprayers 101. Tom, you're smiling, so I'm thinking it must be going okay today. It's going great, Kara. How are you? That's great. And if anyone missed it there, we had the trademark glasses removal from Tom. It's been a while since we've been back in person. So, hey, we're going to have some fun. Now, we're here today to talk about probably one of Tom's favorite topics, which would be nozzles. That's right. So much of the country is at herbicide spraying timing. Most farmers are really getting out into the field and getting their spray on. When it comes to nozzles, what sort of considerations are farmers going to have? Well, we always have to look at, you know, what's the active ingredient and what's the target. Those are the two main things that determine the right spray quality to use. We sort of default to the coarse spray quality, which is kind of the average spray quality that most modern air induction and other low drift tips make. Uh, but we might want to sort of tweak that sometimes, depending on what's growing and what's in the tank. And sort of as, as you know, as we have increasingly complex tank mixes for maybe resistance management, uh, that becomes a little more critical. So when you're looking at numbers of nozzles throughout the season, people are often asking, you know, should we have two, three, or four? What sort of considerations do you have there? Well, most of my customers really have three nozzles, and they're, they're really by selected for water volume. So they'll have a five-gallon tip for burn-off, they'll have a 10-gallon tip for in-crop, and maybe a 15 or so gallon tip for their late-season sprays, fungicides, desiccants, or, and those kinds of things. And that's still, that's still absolutely true. I mean, as an additional level of options might be to have a, a low-drift version of each of those, so that if the conditions require it, you can still go out and spray. Remember, in agronomy, it's all about timing, right? Uh, and a sprayer is really ag an agronomic tool, so you want to make sure you can do it at the right time. Absolutely. And what role does water volumes play into this? Well, water is kind of, uh, it gives you permission to spray the coarser sprays. So, you know, the finer the, 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 or the lower the water volume is, then the finer the sprays that you can actually spray and get away with it. So, you know, that's a principle that aircraft use to, you, to use two to four U.S. gallons, for example. They, they really have to use a, a relatively fine spray to get droplet density. And then as it gets windier and we use coarser and coarser nozzles, we should always increase the water volume so our droplet density doesn't suffer too much. And that's that's a bit of a productivity issue. I, I recognize that, but it is a, an, an opportunity to still spray when it's maybe a little breezy like it is today, still get the job done at the right time. And as you said, it's an agronomic tool and it's a conversation we always seem to have when it comes to selecting these nozzles, but you just want to step back and walk us through which one works best for each. That's right. So we said we'd start with a coarse spray quality. That's kind of the default. So if you're, if you're going to get a general purpose nozzle. You would get an air induction tip or a low drift tip that produces about coarse at the intermediate spray pressures that you're likely to produce. And for an air induction tip, that's probably 50, 60, sometimes even 70 PSI. So we use those at a little bit higher pressures. I think everyone's pretty uh, familiar with that. The next thing we would do is look at the tank mix and the modes of action in the tank mix and perhaps also the, uh, the weeds. So I've got two different kinds of weeds here that we picked out of this canola field. And uh, you know, this is a sort of a green foxtail. Uh, so you got a thin leaf, uh, it's in erect, uh, you know, orientation. Uh, would be very difficult for a large drop to actually hit that and stick to it. So if you have, if you're after grassy weeds like this, you would have to go to a slightly finer spray than, than ordinary. And so that's a consideration if you have a group one or any grassy, uh, grassy herbicide in there, uh, you would want to do that. Uh, on the other hand, I have a little red root pigweed in my other hand, and this one is a typical broadleaf. So it, although it's small, its leaves are relatively large in terms of the area they present to the incoming spray. So if you look at that, you've got easy to wet leaves, large drops might stick to them more likely, L small drops still will, but uh, they'll get a, you'll get away with spraying a coarser spray there. So if you have a tank mix that uses both of them, you'd have to consider the most limiting factor. So, you know, most tank mixes have 
modes of action in there for grassy and broadleaf, you'd always consider the grassy as the priority, and therefore you would go a little finer. Uh, if you need it to spray in the wind, you can probably move that a little coarser just by adding more water. So if you're gonna go seven to 10, maybe, and uh, you need to go a little coarser, you might wanna elevate that to 10 to 12 gallons and then use a, a coarser spray for the windier days. The canopy pre presents the target. And so when we, when we look at uh, the, the canopy from the nozzle's perspective, we're looking straight down and we wanna see how much of the target that we have to hit the weeds do we actually see. If we can see them openly and it's no problem, then it's an easy thing to do with relatively little water and relatively coarse sprays. It's just an open, easy target. If the, the, if the canola is cabbage in a little bit and it's kind of cover the leaves, uh, the leaves are covering the, the rows a little bit more, you will have to get around those leaves. And the only way to really do that is with a finer spray or with more water or a combination of both. So you want to consider that. If you can see it, easy target for coarse sprays. If you can't, finer sprays necessary. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Tom.